I want to look at just one more example um, in which we apply the fundamental theorem of algebra and also the conjugate zeros theorem. So if you look at your handout, the conjugate zeros theorem says if a polynomial f of x has only real coefficients and a plus bi is a zero of f of x, then the conjugate a minus bi is also a zero of f of x. So this tells us our conjugates or our complex zeros um, imaginary zeros will always come in pairs. Um, so if we know one, we automatically know a second one as well. So if you look at this example here that I've given, um, notice here that the degree is four again, so we're going to be looking for four zeros um, if we include multiplicities there. Um, and I also told you that two i is a zero of this polynomial. So from that conjugate zeros theorem, we automatically know that negative 2i is a second zero of this polynomial. So right away we know two different zeros, um, and so we have to find two more. So feel free to pause the video and look on your graph, see if you can find any zeros from the graph to complete all of our zeros. When I look at the graph, I do not see any real zeros, so that just means these last two zeros here are also going to be imaginary. Um, so what we'll have to do is we will have to divide by these factors that we have, x minus 2i and x plus 2i, in order to find the zeros, um, the remaining two zeros that we have here. Now, it's difficult to do synthetic division with imaginary numbers. Um, I actually never do it. Um, I always just do long division. So in order to be able to use all real numbers, we are going to have to multiply these two factors together. And since they are conjugates, um, all of the i's will cancel out here. So if we multiply there, we will get x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix minus 4i squared. So if you look here, the 2ix's will cancel out. We're left with x squared minus 4i squared. But if you think back to when we talked about complex and imaginary numbers, i squared is equal to negative 1, and so this becomes x squared plus 4. So rather than dividing separately, by x minus 2i and x plus 2i, we will divide by x squared plus 4. Um, so we'll have to use long division here. So let me get a new slide so we can have a little bit of space. Okay, with our long division, we're going to divide by x squared plus 4, and we're going to divide our original. Now, if you remember when we talked about long division, we said sometimes to put in columns for the missing degrees. In this case, we're missing an x cubed and an x. But because this is an even degree and all of these are even, there are no odds anywhere, um, I know that's not going to happen at all. So that's why I didn't do it. You still can if that helps, but I am not going to. So to perform this division, um, I think x squared times what will give us x to the fourth? It's another x squared. So that will go on top. And then I multiply the x squared by each piece here. So x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times four is four x squared. And then we'll subtract. And now I repeat x squared from over here times what is 9x squared? Well, it will be a 9. So I'll put a plus 9 at the top. And then multiply that 9 by each of the terms on the left. 9 times x squared is 9x squared, and 9 times 4 is 36. So when I subtract, everything here cancels out which is what I want, because again, it was a factor, so my remainder is zero. So notice at the top, we have our answer, and we were trying to find the zeros here, 
And so our zeros will be when x squared plus 9 is equal to 0. Again, you can use the quadratic formula or completing the square if that is easier for you. Um, but in this case, if we just take the square root of each side, we get our last two zeros at positive and negative 3i.